Hi, my name is Derek and today Sakava and I will be going over Washington DC bike sharing data and forecasting future trends. Washington has a bike sharing system where people can rent a bike at a station, then ride to their destination where they return it to another docking station. This form of public transportation helps reduce carbon emissions and traffic congestion. Being able to accurately forecast the ever-changing demand helps determine supply, improve maintenance scheduling, and reduce waste. Our dataset comes from Kaggle, which contains information from January 1, 2011 through December 31, 2018. Through our EDA and modeling, we found the most important variables for predicting the total customers on a given day are the date, temperature, precipitation, wind, and whether or not that day was a holiday. Now I'm going to hand it off to Sakova to talk about our statistical modeling process. Now analyzing for non-stationarity, we can see evidence against this with the realizations being um, having low dips during the winter times and high dips around the summertime. And this is a cyclical pattern, so it does depend where you are on the timeline. So this is evidence against being a stationary process. We can also see from this realization that there is a, a, a constant variance assumption is there's evidence for that as we can see kind of a fanish um, pull out here. And this data really makes sense. Just by looking at the realizations, we can see that maybe people like going out in the summer versus riding out the cold this fits our intuition and we can see that a weekly uh, seasonal pattern can be present because we do see that when we divide one divided by seven we get 0.1428 and this matches around the frequency for this spectral density indicating that a weekly seasonal pattern or factor would be reasonable. We can see from this Box and Jenkins um, method, if we were to count on this partial autocorrelation plot, we can see that there are eight lines over this limit line indicating an AR8 variable. And also to note, we compared our 1 minus b to the 7th factor table as a reference for our overfit model. Although the numbers don't match exactly, they're pretty close. So we will most likely see that with this transformation over here, we can see that taking a s equals 7 and differencing out we do have uncover a pattern. So we will move forward with an S equals seven. Now moving forward, we can see from the AIC and BIC that an eight zero or an AR eight model fitting was suggested. This was also verified by the PACF plot that we had earlier. We can see that our final ARIMA model with S equals seven uses Berg estimates for the fees. Our average squared errors and rolling windows for the one and 26 uh, weeks can be seen here in this table. We can see that the one weeks outperformed the 26 weeks on both the ASC and the rolling RMSE. If you wanted to see the plot to see the verification of this, we can see earlier here that in the beginning, the one for the one week looks pretty good, but we can see here for the 26 week, not so much. Now we have an AR model, which doesn't include the seasonal model. And we can see that the ASC actually, it, does very well compared to the ARIMA model with S equals seven. And, but the rolling window RMSEs 
for both the one week and 26 weeks do not outperform the REMA model. Next, we will look at models that can leverage our multivariate data set, including information about temperature, precipitation, wind, and whether or not the day is a holiday. Before diving into the modeling results, let's give a brief EDA of these explanatory variables. In the top row, we can see there is likely correlation between total customers and all of the explanatory variables indicated by the three stars. In the left-hand column, we see a positive correlation between total customers and the three temperature metrics. This means that temperature increases are associated with an increase in total customers. Lastly, we can see a negative correlation between total customers and precipitation and wind. This means that an increase in precipitation and wind is associated with a decrease in total customers. We tried a variety of vector autoregressive models that take into account all the explanatory variables we went over in the last slide. All of them ended up with poor ASC values similar to the one we selected. I believe this is because of the false assumption that all the variables are stationary, which they are not. Next, we tried a multi-layered perception model. We ended up with a model that has nine input nodes, five hidden nodes, and the output node. The one-week forecast doesn't perform well similar to the VAR model, but we ended up with our best 26-week ASE at just above 9 million, showing the value and potential in multivariate models. Comparing the model results, we can see no single model clearly beats out the others. The AR model has the best one-week ASE. The Sarima has the best rolling window RMSEs. The MLP had the best 26-week ASE. I encourage you to pause the video and pick which model you think is most useful before I hand it off to Sokova to explain our final model selection. We decided to go with the ARIMA 8 with the S equals 7 model. This would help the stakeholders who wanted this for a 365-day forecast. We thought this would be useful because the ASC and the rolling window RMCs were reasonable. And this model is pretty simple in that it doesn't depend on other explanatory variables that could have variance in them. We think this would be a superior model, um, a useful one, and we will stick with this one. If you've made it this far, we want to thank you for listening to our presentation. We hope we made your day a little bit better. Thanks.